Welcome to Storytime with Sugar. Today we're reading Lazy Daisy. Pay close attention, young girls and young boys, for here's a sad story of laundry and toys. There once was a child who called herself Daisy, and Daisy was super fantastically lazy. I'm Lazy Daisy, the child would scream. I'm perfect as ponies and chocolate ice cream. I'm better than angels and blackberry pie, and I'll never work till the day that I die. To bite on her nails, she hired her brother, and oatmeal was spooned to her lips by her mother. She trained her iguana to buckle her sandals, and on birthdays, her hair dryer blew out the candles. But the thing that would finally seal Daisy's doom was the fact that she simply would not clean her room. I'd rather read turtle tales, Daisy would say, or punch a gorilla from southern Bombay. On stilts, I'd walk backwards to El Salvador before I'd pick up all the toys on my floor. Her room was a twirling tornado of clothes that made grown-ups shiver right down to their toes. There were piles of blue jeans and lost underwear and 17 dollies without any hair. Twisted up hangers all bent out of shape. Robots with arms held together with tape. A teddy with beans falling out of his head and thousands of socks were heaped by the bed. Hamsters and guinea pigs lived on the run. In the room that sparked memories of old World War I, there were crumbles of cookies and spilled carrot stew and hundreds of armies of ants marching through. My room is the messiest room in the world, Daisy declared as she tiptoed and swirled. Mom wants it tidy, but I could care less. Nothing compares to my marvelous mess. Now, messes are ugly and sometimes they stink, but messes are harmless, so most people think. But one crazy night in the middle of May, when Daisy's poor grandma drove over to stay, something went haywire, something went bad, something ridiculous, something quite sad. At supper that night, near a quarter to nine, just before grandma slurped from her wine, her dentures walked loose and slipped to the floor and bounced through the kitchen and out the back door. Follow those dentures, her dear grandma said. In the name of bananas and earthworms and bread, they hopped through the garden and sprung to the roof, then down the brick chimney in a black cloudy poof. The teeth that had fallen from old grandma's head came to a rest underneath Daisy's bed. I'll catch them, grandma then shouted out loud as she dove into the mess that made Daisy proud. And just as you may have predicted or feared, the toothless old grandmother just disappeared. That jungle of daisies was out of control. It seized her dear grandma and swallowed her whole. This is what happens to kids who were lazy, mother declared to a weepy-eyed daisy. I hope that for your sake your fingers are crossed, because right now it looks like your grandmother's lost. Daisy breathed deeply, said, fetch me a broom. It's time I got busy and cleaned up my room. She dashed to the closet to start off the job, arrived at the door and twisted the knob. The door didn't quiver nor rattle nor budge, for the hinges were knotted with string and hot fudge. But from deep in the walls came a grumbling sound that shivered the windows and shook up the ground. Daisy whispered a blessing and squeezed her eyes tight and yanked on the doorknob with all of her might. The pressure of board games, jump rows and jacks, beanbags, parkas, race cars and tracks burst from the closet and busted the door and flooded the room from the fan to the floor. Daisy's poor family was buried in dice, bicycle bells and mechanical mice. One-eyed stuffed animals gushed through the hall as the junk from the closet continued to fall. Peach pits and orange peels and half-eaten pears and opal-shaped basketballs flopped down the stairs. Daisy's glass windows were blasted to bits by piggy bank softballs and wood-burning kits. Squirt guns and checkerboards plunged to the yard and buried the birdbath in Pet St. Bernard. Puzzles and roller skates scattered the street, but the closet's eruption was far from complete. The mess from the closet just kept coming down until finally it buried Daisy's whole town. Mountains of underwear covered the school and gold rubber ducky swamped every pool. The subways were loaded with wiffle ball bats and shoes filled the sewers and buried the rats. Comic books piled up layer on layer, burying the new city hall and the mayor. On Main Street, where rush hour traffic once flowed, 9,000 marbles spun loose down the road. 182 minutes went by till finally the mess was a half mile high. The last toy to fall from the closet that day was a fat armadillo stuffed with dry hay. The city was silent except for the breeze, the buzzing of bees, and the sneezing of fleas. 
but all of a sudden from deep in the mess, something popped up next to Daisy's address. The sight that appeared was the raggedy face of the laziest girl in the whole human race. Daisy was shocked when she saw what she did. Her heart felt like vultures, molasses, and squid, so she shrieked to the sky like a red squawking hen. I'll never, not ever, be lazy again. I'll clean up this jumble, she yelled through her tears. If it takes me a thousand and ninety-nine years, I'll call in the army and merchant marines, elephants, dump trucks, and washing machines. I'll have the most fabulous yard sale on earth, and people will come from Brazil and Fort Worth. I'll telephone Santa and eight of his deer to haul off the clutter for Christmas next year. So Daisy began the incredible chore of cleaning her room till it shined like before. The task wasn't easy, and some people say that Daisy's still working to this very day. So whether you're skinny or hairy or tall or live in Bermuda or Southern St. Paul or Paris or Stinkwater Falls, Alabama, for the sake of your city, your toys, and your grandma, in the name of banana and earthworms and brooms, get yourself busy and clean up your rooms.